Uh, sorry about that. That's the first notes I've played this morning, and I had a gig last night, so I'm tired. Um, also, don't worry about this thing. This is not a Brexit mug. It's just uh, a mug that I got my coffee in for this morning. Ah, okay. So today, this video is about the bridge pickup. Um, now, there's no reason that any of you might know this, but if you visit this channel at all, you probably see it most of the time. Unless I'm playing jazz, I'm playing a guitar with all single coil pickups. Um, this isn't by accident. Uh, I just prefer the way they sound, and um, they, to me, got more headroom and dynamics for the way they sound. Was a humbucker seems to. In my mind and my ear, it closes off the sound more than uh, a single coil. So that's why I use single coil pickups. Um, now, the majority of what I play tends to be on the bridge, uh, not bridge, sorry, the neck pickup. Um, um, especially lower gain stuff. But what I find is for the higher gain things, the bridge pickup is actually a bit more useful, it's got more definition and clarity to it. Um, but the issue is that some people find that the bridge pickup um, is, I think the term would be like ice picky, like too bright. Um, so I just wanted to cover a few thoughts on this. Um, so this is uh, a tone that I programmed is it last week or the week before, called Eric Lead. And the idea was that it was to sort of emulate the Eric Johnson uh, lead tone, kind of the... Good, isn't it? Anyway, <laughs> so, um, yeah, um, Eric Johnson lead tone. I think for his high against stuff, he probably does go to the bridge pickup. I'm not completely sure of that. I could be wrong. But feel free to let me know in the comments if I am wrong about that. Um, but to me, so this is kind of the... Uh, when I was younger, I used to listen to quite a lot of John Petrucci and stuff. But I think he uses the opposite opposite approach. So I feel like for a lot of his rhythm stuff, he's on the bridge pickup. And then to get that kind of smoother um, singing lead, he'll go to the neck pickup. And then there's times in his solo where he'll open up to go to the bridge again. Um, I kind of took the opposite approach somehow for some reason. Um, it goes back to when well, it probably goes back prior to this, but when I got my Nomad Forty Five and Mesa Boogie, it's my first sort of real amp. Um, I found that on the lead channel, uh, you could sort of set the mids really high, and then use your bridge pickup, and it would give this kind of thick but clear lead tone that's not harsh. Um, so that's the thing, so my tip would be dial in a tone with a load of mids, uh, like literally you're talking mids, so I, yeah, well on that I've not got the mids particularly high for some reason, I don't know what that would sound like if I plugged it in right now, um, but yeah, mids are your friend if you're using your bridge pickup, um, yeah, so that, I might just try and dial in a tone from scratch on here and see if we can come up with something. But so also I think if you're if you're on the neck pickup and it's gonna sound smooth on your bridge pickup, it probably sound a bit dark on your neck pickup. So it's just listen. <laughs> So that to me is a bit more dark and closed off, um, but probably that's what you're going to want if you're going to get the bridge pickup to have that kind of singing.
then the other cool thing about having the neck pickup, uh, sorry, the bridge pickup, is that if you're hitting the harmonics and stuff, they jump out a lot more than if you'll be using the neck pickup. Um, in most of my videos, although both my K line, this Fender Strat, and um, probably some of the others, the tone knob is connected so it will make an impact. <laughs> So I do have my tone control connected to the bridge pickup. Um, that's not by design, it just happens to be the case on most of my guitars, I think. Um, I still run everything all the way open, generally. Um, yeah, but if you are finding it, if you are finding that your bridge pickup is too bright for you and it is connected to the tone control, um, and you don't want to do so, make the um, preset or tone dark enough that it will uh, do that sing and leave thing then you can back off this and this does So let me try and break down the tone. Um, well, this, since this is working, that's probably what we should go for. So on that particular tone, I'm using a, it's called the Top Secret OD. I need to look that up and find out what that's based on. Maybe I should do that now. Hold on. Top Secret OD Helix. So weirdly enough, that's based on a Dodd OD250, apparently. Um, interesting. So I've got the gain at about 8.8 .8 and the level at 8.3. And so here's what I'm saying about mids and stuff. So I'm on the Line 6 Litigator amp for this one, which is not particularly indicative of anything that Eric Johnson might use, but it's just what I used for this patch. The drive I've got at 9.1, so pretty high. The bass I've got a 5.6. Now the mids I've got at 10. So the mids are all the way up for that to work. And the treble is at 0, presence is at 0, and the channel volume is at 7.5, master's at 5. But do you see what I mean? That the, the mids are super high, treble's not so high. So that's why you get that kind of. <laughs> I have actually looked at some pictures of um, Eric Johnson's rig and I can see that on uh, so he uses some Marshall stuff um, he does have the treble all the way down so that was where I got the idea to try that uh, obviously like you I thought well, that's not going to work but it turns out it does so yeah that's what I'd say try if you're having issues with your bridge pickup um, and you've got access to a, a way that you can set your lead tone to be different to your rhythm tone then go crazy with the mids um, try different stuff with the treble um, but I think if you do get a tone that can work with your bridge pickup then you do have the benefit of that clarity and definition and I think it does get a... <laughs> get that sing and lead thing uh, I think a bit better with the the neck uh, it's a bit more lyrical the bridge sorry not neck oh and then also I've got a fairly extreme high cut on the cab I've got the, the high cut of 3.9 kilohertz so that's pretty aggressive um, and I think that's the key to, to some of this kind of sound is kind of bold choices so bold choices in the mid bold choices in terms of gain you're using a lot of gain but you also use tailoring that shape quite a lot so that you're not getting the 
Maybe I'll just take off the high cut a sec so you can. That's quite a lot of fizz in that case, so that's why I'm using the high cut to get rid of that fizz and just end up with the smooth sound that I'm after, which if I use the neck pickup sounds a little bit muddy, a little bit woolly. If I use the bridge pickup, it's great, it's this cutting not cutting but like it will cut through because of the high mid content but it's, it's smooth it's got round edges so that's how I like to use the bridge pickup hopefully that's helpful um, please drop some questions uh, I did this video on the basis of um, my old music tech teacher Rick Leyland who I'm still in contact with um, I just sent him or well, he just bought the uh, Tokai that was in one of my videos and that's he's used to having a, a bridge humbucker in his strats which personally I don't really find necessary um, although I know a lot of people do um, but yeah so the idea is this video was for him dialing in a lead tone that will work with your bridge pickup um, and I thought maybe it'd be slightly useful for other people because if you like my sound or whatever I've got going on, that is the key to my kind of smooth lead tone, high mids, uh, bridge pickup, and yeah, an aggressive high cut. Cool. Um, you can get this patch if you want it. Um, yeah, it's in my bundle thingy. Um, that's with the high cut. Anyway, let's go back to what it was. Maybe I'll put some playing on the end of this video now. <laughs> 